It shouldn't hurt to be a patient. But every day, in hospitals and healthcare facilities around our nation, patients and nurses and other hospital staff are being hurt, not by some super bug, but by the very reason the patient is in the hospital, nursing care. The majority of these injuries are the result of patient handling tasks, such as lifting, transferring, and repositioning. Most of these tasks are performed manually without the use of equipment. We don't know how many patients are harmed per year, but manual lifting and moving, but injuries to healthcare personnel are tracked. Healthcare personnel have been on the top 10 list of workers with the highest risk for work-related in 2002. Direct care nurses have ranked fifth among all occupations for the number of cases of injuries resulting in days away from work. This is above construction workers who rank eighth. Nursing aides, orderlies, and attendants sustained the most injuries of all occupations. The incident rate of occupational injuries in healthcare is roughly two to three times the rate as that of private industry. Lobbying for safe patient handling by the American Nurses Association and other organizations, the government has done nothing. In fact, they worked against it. In 2000, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, proposed a safe patient handling standard. Congress rescinded it the next year and barred them from further work on a standard. Several representatives have introduced legislation since that time, but all died in committee. Without federal requirements, healthcare facilities are slow to adopt safe patient handling practices and purchase the equipment necessary to move patients safely. Hello, my name is Lois Andrews. I'm a clinical nurse specialist working in critical care. Today, I would like to discuss the reasons for the need for safe patient handling legislation and enlist your support in asking Congress to create safe patient handling standards in the United States. Although the injury incidence rates are high, they underestimate the true number of injuries. Incident rates only count cases when they occur. Many injuries are due to cumulative damage and are not reported until one to two years after the incident. Also, the rates do not consider staff working despite injuries or pain. In a survey of nurses, over 52% complained of chronic back pain lasting more than 14 days. In 87% of nurses, safety concerns influence their decision about the type of nursing they do and their continued practice in the field. Worst of all, 12% of nurses are leaving the profession for good because of back pain. This preventable exodus is not something the healthcare consumer can afford with the current and projected nursing shortage. In their report, Keeping Patients Safe, Transforming the Work Environment of Nurses, the Institute of Medicine predicts the nursing shortage to rise up to 30% by 2020. With this shortage, the committee believes it is even more imperative that nurses' work and work environments be designed to facilitate the safe delivery of nursing care. If the supply of nurses is to be stretched thin, nurses must be supported by work processes, workspaces, and organizational cultures. They suggest that using technology for lifting will ease the burden on existing staff. On the other hand, newer products make it easier for less staff to move patients safely. For years, healthcare workers have been taught to use good body mechanics to protect themselves from injury while caring for patients. They are required by OSHA to have yearly education on back injury prevention and patient handling. Despite this training, injuries still occur. Poor lifting techniques or deconditioning of staff have been blamed for these injuries. A better answer is factors related to patients, including the weight of the patient, awkward positioning and posture, asymmetric distribution of weight in a patient's body, no stable area to grip, limited levels of assistance, and often resistance from the patient. Good body mechanics include keeping your back straight while lifting a heavy object, lifting with your leg muscles, not lifting an object more than one foot away, keeping the object close to the body as you lift, pivoting the whole body while carrying an object, using both sides of your body to lift, and only transferring stable objects. Getting a patient in and out of bed is a typical nursing function, but can this be done safely without violating the body mechanics principles? When moving the patient, the nurse must reach for the patient and bend over. Unless the patient weighs less than the nurse or is very steady on his feet, the lift will require at least two people. The nurse must then use only one side of the body and pivot to place the patient in the bed. A planned lift or transfer can change in a split second when a patient becomes weak, uncooperative, or combative. 
Both the patient and staff are at risk for injury. The patient may end up falling, causing abrasion, cut, or broken bone. With the use of equipment, the same patient transfer can occur safely, without injury to the patient or the staff. Having lift equipment available has other advantages for patients. Some patients are embarrassed at the number of staff called to the bedside to reposition them. Others have developed skin damage due to manual repositioning. Worst of all, patients have to wait in an uncomfortable position until sufficient staff is available to move them safely. With the aid of lifting equipment, one nurse can safely reposition and lift a patient alone. A safe patient handling program involves employers making a plan, purchasing equipment, training staff in safe patient handling techniques, and routinely evaluating the plan. The training includes how to use the equipment, how to decide what equipment should be used, and how many staff are required to move the patient safely. Although such a program sounds expensive, the price is offset by savings in other areas. Safe patient handling programs are cost effective due to reductions in workers' compensation claims, costs associated with absenteeism, and turnover. In 2010, workers' compensation programs in the U.S. paid 57.5 billion dollars in benefits. The average cost of a work-related injury in the U.S. exceeds $34,000. These costs include health care expenses, temporary disability payments, and permanent disability pay settlements. Facilities that implemented injury prevention efforts focusing on lifting and repositioning methods have achieved considerable success in reducing work-related injuries and associated workman's compensation costs. Without including indirect benefits, the payback period for a safe patient handling and movement program is calculated at 4.3 years. So far, 10 states have enacted legislation concerning safe patient handling. This legislation has ranged from establishing a policy or committee addressing safe patient moving and lifting to requiring lift equipment to be included in remodeling plans or mandating the purchase of equipment. Finally, the Nurse and Patient Safety and Protection Act remains in the Subcommittee on Workforce Protections where it has not yet had a hearing and no hearing is scheduled. The bill is designed to prevent musculoskeletal disorders for direct care registered nurses and other health care providers working in health care facilities by the elimination of manual lifting through the use of mechanical devices, except during the declared state of emergency. I urge you to contact your senator or congressman and ask for their support for action on this bill. Together, we can make health care safe for both the patient. Thank you.